Well, Happy New Year. It is great to see all of you. Great to be back in the house with you this morning. Again, I want to welcome those of you who are watching online, wherever, whenever you're watching this. Thank you for being a part of our experience today. We are starting a new series today that we're calling Pray First. Uh, it'll take us through the month of January, and believe it or not, this isn't just the first Sunday. This is the fir- our first of four that we have left in this building. Uh, it's just kind of hard to fathom and, and to think about uh, the journey we've been on, the adventure we've been on, and uh, man, what's going to be happening into this month. And so we really, uh, I really just felt that, man, as we prepare for this next chapter, that we should do what, what Scripture tells us to do all the time, but that we should really focus our heart as we begin this year on the Lord and to seek him and to, to, to seek his will for our church. We're doing this series in collaboration with uh, some other churches and, and other leaders across the nation as, as we are believing uh, for God, not only as we're moving into a new building, but really for God to birth a new movement within his church, the church, across the nation. And every significant move of God is always birthed in prayer. It begins in prayer. And so we're going to talk today about our priorities, and then over the next few weeks, we're going to look at some different models of prayer, and then as a church, we begin today our prayer and fasting uh, 21-day journey uh, that I'll be talking more about here in a moment, but we're going to get started uh, this year right and believe corporately as we do that and individually as you do that, that we're going to see God respond in a significant way to that. Well, this week, uh, as probably many of you saw or were watching on Monday Night Football, uh, there was a, a football player for the Buffalo Bills by the name of DeMar Hamlin, who had really just kind of a, a one in a million kind of circumstance that, uh, that a weird hit to his heart at just the right time caused him to go into cardiac arrest. He was resuscitated with CPR a couple different times on the field. Uh, and, and thankfully, as of today, he's recovering, he's, he's doing well. But as you saw, like, I mean, it was, it, it, it kind of was a, this national news thing that was really pretty cool because we saw uh, sports uh, analysts praying on, on NFL Live, national TV. We saw many people coming together, uniting in prayer for this young man. And it's just cool to see how many people are saying, man, prayer works. Prayer makes a difference. Prayer can change things. And that's really the heart of this series and, and where we're at. But, but also what happened in that, in that circumstance is that it brings perspective, right? Everybody was saying like, wow, here's a 24-year-old prime athlete in the the prime of his life, just athletic, healthy, you know, strong, and still something like that can happen. And and anytime something like that hits close to home or we see it, right, it puts things into perspective. We start saying things like, man, hug your kids, love your family, call your parents, like do the things that matter most because why? Because oftentimes we forget to do that. We lose sight of what's important and that's the powerful thing about perspective and perspective simply means uh, it's an attitude towards a way of regarding something. It's a new point of view and you see, first of all, a proper perspective creates gratitude even in challenging situations. I remember when our daughter had open heart surgery at five weeks old and, and she was in the ICU and, and we, she was recovering well and we went to the, the step down floor where essentially you start providing more of the care for her as, as parents and, and I'm walking the halls of, of that wing of the hospital and I'm, I'm peeking in rooms as I walk by and I see this room that's completely decorated. Uh, things on the wall, toys, things like that and and when I saw the nurse who came back into our room, I said, hey, quick question for you. I said, the room down the hall there on the right, I said, it's, it's completely decorated. I said, why is that? And she said, well, that patient lives here. And she'll be here until she gets a heart. She needs a heart transplant. And without one, she's going to die. And immediately, I'm in a very challenging situation. I mean, our daughter just had open heart surgery. It wasn't easy but then it puts things in perspective. I said, my daughter had a condition that they could correct with surgery. This, this, this little kid didn't. And her parents are literally waiting on another child to die so that theirs can live. Can you imagine? Perspective, right? It creates gratitude. Even in my challenging situation, I said, man, God, thank you 
that you've been able to, to, to help my daughter without needing that type of surgery, without that type of transplant. It, it puts things in, in perspective, creates gratitude, but perspective also is a powerful thing and a great thing because a proper perspective aligns our priorities, at least for a little while. You see, that's what happened this week. Many of us, man, we see something like that. Something hits close to home. It aligns, it aligns our priorities to go, man, I got to get things in the right order. I got to get things in my life situated in the right way. And I remember I was living in Springfield, Missouri, and I was driving into to church at, at I worked. I was early in the morning, and I was on this, this highway, and, and there was really not a lot of people out, and there was this car that was way in front of me, uh, and, and I kept seeing her drift into the, the other lane, and then she'd drift back, and I was like, I mean, either she was up really late, or she's, you know, distracted, something's going on, and so I kind of got back a little bit more, and could tell she was distracted, and I see the light from where I'm at turn red, way ahead of her, and she's not paying attention. She never slows down, she goes straight through the intersections, T-boned right in front of me, car twirls around, lands on the other side of the highway. I'm the first one there. Other cars stop. I get out. She's sloped over, you know, over the wheel. She's got blood everywhere. We're on the phone with 911, and, and I'll just, she survived. And I mean, it was, it was a, a very chaotic situation, right? And I promise you, for weeks, every intersection I went through, I don't care how green it was, I was slowing down and looking. I was like, I do not want to get T-boned like that. You see, it was a perspective change because of that situation I was in. My perspective change. I, I didn't just go through green lights like I had before because I saw something that changed my point of view and my perspective. But you know what? Probably two or three months later, I wasn't thinking about it anymore. And that's the problem with perspective is that it kind of wears off. And we align our priorities, but then we get our priorities out of whack. And the thing that we have to realize is that not just perspective gets us to where we wanna go in life, discipline gets us to where we wanna go in life. It's daily disciplines that keep our priorities in line. Perspective aligns our priorities, but it's discipline that leads us to the desired destination of our life. James Clear, who wrote the book Atomic Habits, talks about keystone habits in our life, disciplines, that we can put into our life that really make a difference. And he, he talks about keystone habits, and that's a habit that has the, the opportunity to create positive momentum in every area of your life. And he talks about like if you are willing to commit to exercise daily, that exercising daily doesn't just impact your physical health, that impacts your mental health. And people who exercise on a daily basis often then begin to start eating better without even trying to eat better. They start becoming more productive at work. They actually spend less money. And he talks about how exercise is a keystone habit that doesn't just impact the one thing you're doing, but it can have a ripple effect throughout your whole life. And as we are in the new year and we are aligning our priorities, and essentially that's what we do. We reflect, we look back, we look forward, and we say, hey, what do I need to do this year different? What do I need to do? How do I get my priorities in the right order so that they can get me to where I want to go? What disciplines do I need to establish in my life that will take me to the desired destination? Because we all have a destination we want to get to. But can I tell you something? Intention doesn't get you there. Discipline gets you there. It's, it's creating discipline in our life to do that. And that's really what I want to talk about in this series, that I want to give you a keystone habit, discipline, that'll make a difference in every area of your life. It'll radically transform not just one area of your life, it'll help you succeed in every area of your life. And it begins with the very first sentence, four, first four words of the Bible, and it's this, in the beginning, God. Say that with me. In the beginning, God. There it is. In the beginning, there was God. And God was put first at the beginning. And the most, the, the, the keystone habit, the keystone discipline, the secret to a happy life, the secret to a blessed life, to a fulfilled life is in the beginning God, is to put God in the beginning of everything that you do. He's there. He's a part of it. He's the, he's the central part of your marriage. If I'm telling you, you want to have a better marriage this year? In the beginning, put God first. 
Put God first in your marriage. You want to have better relationships and friendships? Put God first. You want to succeed more in your career, achieve things in your, in your job? Put God first. You want to see your, your priority changes in your finances, right? And you put God first in your finances. It's a principle of the first that goes throughout the Bible. Everything in the Bible is built on a principle of the principle of the first and, and putting God first. It's why it's the first of the Ten Commandments. Look at this in Exodus 20, 1 through 3. And God spoke these words. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. Here it is. You shall have no other gods before me. That's a lowercase g, God. And gods doesn't necessarily mean religion, other religions that you pursue. It means your loves. It means your passions. It means your priorities. God doesn't mind that you have other loves, but he requires to be first. You cannot have other things in place of God in your life. He has to take first place. And if you think that your life, that God is, is, is a part of your life, but he's not first in your life, I'm gonna say something that may challenge some of you a little bit, but if he's not first in your life, he's not really in your life because God doesn't take second place. He won't accept second place, third place, whatever place you put him in. He demands it and he can do that, why? Because he did it for you. God put you first. He sent his only son into this world. He gave first, he gave Jesus for us. Jesus died in our place and he demands that we put him first. You can't love anyone, anything more than him. He has to be first in our life. I like to think of it this way, right? The Bible says that he's the king of kings, the Lord of lords. We talked a little bit about this at Christmas, that he's the Shar Shalom. He's the prince. He's the one in charge. And that you can't experience the blessings of God if you aren't surrendered to him as the Lord of your life. And it's the same principle that applies right here. For him to be king, listen to me, for him to be king, Think about this just even from an earthly perspective. To live in a king's kingdom, the kingdom has to be your priority. The laws of the kingdom, to live within that kingdom, within that nation, whatever the king says, you must do because you're a part of his kingdom. And if you do what the king says, there's benefit and blessing attached to it. If you don't, there's consequences attached to it. And if he cannot be king if you do not prioritize your life around his kingdom. But here's the coolest thing, what Jesus said. What did he say? He says, if you seek me and my kingdom first, what does he promise to do? Take care of yours. If you seek me first, I, I can't be second. I can't just be a part of your life. I am your life. Your world as a believer should revolve around your king. And his kingdom comes first, but when you do that, when you apply this principle of the first throughout your life, it changes every part of your life. It's a keystone habit. It's a keystone discipline that impacts everything. And, and I wanna talk to you about why God does this and how we can impl uh, apply this principle of the first, or if you wanna call it principle of priorities to your life but it runs throughout the Bible. And whether you're a Christian or not, listen, your life is marked by your priorities. It's marked by your priorities. Priorities have power. First things have power in our life. And the first thing I gotta tell you is you gotta give God the first of everything. That's the principle of the first. To break it down for you, it's throughout scripture, but you give God the first of everything. And a lot of pastors teach this from a money perspective, but listen to me, it's much bigger than just money. It's everything. It includes your money, but it's everything. He wants the first of your heart. He wants the first of your thoughts. He wants the first part of your time. He wants, he wants all of that, and when we do that, it'll follow. When it comes specific to money in Leviticus 27, Verse 30, he says this, a tithe of everything from the land, whether grain or soil or fruit from the trees, belongs to the Lord. It is holy and to be set apart. It is holy, which means to be set apart. All of the tithe, he says, a tithe of everything, of everything belongs to the Lord. The first part of your income is to go to the Lord. We've talked about this, and I'm not gonna spend time talking about giving today, but it's an important part of your life. And I'm not talking just about being legalistic, but 
but where we give it first. In fact, in Proverbs 3, it tells us to honor the Lord with our possessions, the first fruits it talks about. That in that time, the farmers would take the very first part of their harvest and they would give it first. In fact, this week, I did something because I was studying this. I thought, man, I, I have a recurring donation that, that gives my tithe to the church, but it came out on the 30th of every month. And I thought, well, that's not the first of the month. That's the end of the month. And I even got convicted about this this week. And I'm not trying to be legalistic, but I believe in this principle, so I changed it. It's going to come out the first of every month. And I changed it because I needed to increase my recurring giving. So I increased it to keep in proportion with God's blessing in my life that, that I'm, I'm, I'm increasing that. But it's about priority. It's not just about the amount. It's about the priority. It's about giving it first. It's not necessarily just how much. It's when you do it. And when you give first, man, you're putting God first. You're saying you're first. I, I, pay, I, I give to you before I pay my mortgage. I give to you before I make my, my car payment. God, whatever it is, I'm going to be first. 1 Corinthians 16, 2, it says on the first day of every week. Here it is, a principle of the first. It's throughout Scripture. I'm just giving you a few examples. On the first day of the week, each of you should set aside a sum of money in keeping with your income, saving it up, so that when I come, this is the Apostle Paul, I won't even have to take a collection. We won't have to do it because you've already done it. That's a principle of the first. And that's what tithing really is. And, and it's a principle about putting God first. In fact, Deuteronomy 14, 23 tells us the purpose of tithing is to teach you to always put God first place in your life. It teaches us that, to keep him there. So today I want to talk to you about this powerful principle in four places as we begin this year for you to put God first. And hopefully, I believe if you do this, it'll transform your life, every area of your life. The first one is this, the first of your year. Put God first. We give him the first of our year. That's what we're doing right now. We're starting with prayer and fasting, 21 days of prayer and fasting. Essentially, this is like a tithe of our year to the Lord. Hey, we're gonna give you this first part of our year. Our team has put together these guides for you. Uh, you can pick them up as you leave today. It's one per family. You can also text AC21 to 94000 and they'll get you a part of the communication on that. We're gonna have some times of prayer here at the church on Tuesday evening, Wednesday, lunch hour. Uh, our hope is, is as the building gets a little bit more complete, uh, leading up to our grand opening, that we're gonna do some prayer specifically there uh, for what God wants to do. But this is about, uh, about putting God first as a church corporately together this year. And for you individually, where you're saying, man, I'm gonna make sure that, that prayer is a priority in my life. It's a priority for our church. Fasting and prayer and all these things are important ways for us to prioritize our year, the first of our year, around seeking God first. And so I'm gonna ask everybody, and, and there's different types of fasting, I'm gonna go through them very quickly, but because of, of the way you can do this, everybody should participate in this. And, and again, if you have like, you know, food things and health things. Obviously, contact your physician. Make sure, you know, you're not passing out or, or having problems physically because of, of fasting. But you can fast a lot of different ways and a lot of different things. The first thing you can do is a complete fast. This calls for drinking liquids only. Typically with water, maybe you, you, you put some light juices or some things into that. Uh, again, always get medical supervision before you do that. But it, it's, it's about, again, just... This is what the fast Jesus did. We see this throughout scripture where we just completely get rid of food and we do liquids only. The selective fast, this could be, again, because of diet restrictions, things like that, where you, you select certain foods that you won't eat. Maybe you're gonna cut all sugar out of your diet or all carbohydrates. That We see the Daniel fast in scripture where they removed uh, meat and carbohydrates essentially from their diet where you consume vegetables uh, and, and fruit and juice, and you can fast that way. There's a partial fast. This is where uh, maybe you do intermittent fasting, the Jewish fast, they would call it, from sun up to sundown. And so when the sun comes up, you stop eating. When it goes down, you can eat again. And so there's a, there's a block of time that you're, you're not eating. Again, setting aside time to seek God first that. Then I, I, you could do what's called a soul fast. This is more emotion and mind. Uh, this could be, hey, I'm going get, to get rid of all social media. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to watch television. I'm going to, to stop you know, scrolling through Fox News or CNN. I'm going to just get rid of some things in my life and get away from the usual routine of my life and spend those 
those times in prayer and intercession. You replace your meals with prayer. You replace other things you do in your life with prayer. And because you can fast in, in many different ways, everyone can participate in this. And this is about you saying, God, I'm giving you the first of my year. 21 days, God, we're seeking you. We're, we're, we're seeking your will and your direction for our life. We, we put God first in our year. You give God the first of your month. The first of your month. And this is where, where you know, even for Jess and I, we, we have a, a, a calendar on our wall that she kind of makes it artsy and uses cool chalk markers and things like that, you know. Uh, but she clears it off and we put up our calendar. And every month we set our calendar and we look at our calendar and you put God first on your calendar. Listen to me. Some of you, you need to, to quit scheduling things in your calendar that schedules God out of your calendar. We don't, we don't even think about it. Someone says, hey, you guys want to do this? You do? Oh, well, what is it? Oh, it's, 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 it's every Sunday for, for the rest of your life. <laughs> well, no, I, I can't do that. Because if I schedule you in, then I'm scheduling God out. Right, where we, we put God first on our calendar. Don't schedule things in that schedule God out. Every month you should sit down, look at your schedule, look at your work calendar, and look at your meetings, your travel, your activities, and don't do too much. We talked about this last year. We started off the year with a series, Hurry Up and Slow Down, how we're all running at a pace that doesn't have God's grace in it, and we gotta make sure we run at the pace that includes God's grace. That means Sabbath and rest, I'll talk about in a moment, but, but you put God first on your calendar. Then you put God first in your budget. About putting God first, the first of your month. The first of your month, you're giving. Maybe you do that weekly, but we give first. Not after we pay for everything else, and then we give if there's anything left over. That's not first, that's last. That's not prioritizing God, and that's not faith. Like I said, I, I literally changed my recurring donation. It's the same amount, it's the same monthly, but it was coming out the end of the month, not the first of the month. I put God first, I, I, I put him in my life, in, in my budget, in my calendar, I put God first. Listen to me, I, if, if God can't be first in your life if he's last in your budget. It's just not possible. If you show me your calendar and your checking account, I will tell you what your priorities are. It's that simple. And we can't say that God's a priority if he's not on our calendar and in our budget. So we give him the first of our month. We give him the first of our week. This is worship and replenishing. This is church, right? Originally, the Sabbath was on Saturday, and as the church culture shifted and changed and, and culture in general changed, they, they changed that celebration to Sunday because they wanted it to be the first day of the week. I know sometimes we view Monday as the first day of the week, but you all know Sunday is actually the first day of the week. And so they switched it. We wanna worship first. We wanna give God the first part of our week. We're, we're dedicating time to him. And I just wanna challenge you, and listen, I know, you know my opinion is bias, right? <laughs> 10 years ago this month, Jess and I moved here to plant this church. And we're gonna be moving into that building. I mean, there's just, amazing things that are happening right now and causing me to reflect a lot. And I know, like, right, this is, I, I do this for a living, right? I get it. They're like, look, dude, just chill out about Sunday church attendance. It's not that big of a deal. Like, but it is a big deal. Why? Because it's the principle of the first. You're saying, God, you get the first of our week. And right now, across the nation, church attendance is in crazy decline. People don't prioritize it, it's not a priority. The Sabbath is no longer sacred. It doesn't mean what it used to mean, right? I remember growing up, like they didn't schedule stuff on Sundays. You didn't have sports on Sundays. If you did, it was later in the afternoon because church was a priority still, culturally. Now it's not. They'll schedule your kids stuff on every day of the week. They don't care about it. So if they don't care about it, you have to care about it. You have to prioritize it. And I get it, this is my thing, this is what I do for a living, but I believe in it, I've given my life to it, our team's given their life to it, our volunteers, our dream teams, we give our life to this thing because we believe gathering in God's house makes a difference. We believe worshiping together makes a difference. We believe when you prioritize God, the first part of your week, every week it's a priority. Listen, I know you're gonna get sick, you're gonna have stuff, but when you look at your general calendar, man, God's a priority on my calendar. That's why I tell you, get your students here on Wednesday nights. Get them at youth group, it makes a difference. Get your kids back in Kidventure during, on Sundays, it makes a difference. 
You're teaching them, you're modeling for them a priority. You gotta get in a group and on a team. 5.26, we give God the first. And with our time, it's not even 10%, it's just if you just gave God 1% of your awake hours, it's 5.26 hours a month. That if you dedicated that to the Lord, you prioritize that onto your calendar, it will make a difference on every part of your calendar. That's the thing that we forget. That when you give God the first of your week, when you give God the first of your finances, God can take 90 farther than you can take 100. Test them. He tells you, test me in this. And as a church, we let you do that. You can stop by the thing. We have a 90-day tithe challenge. We don't talk about it a lot, but if you want to tie for 90 days, you say, man, I'm really getting convicted about this, we have a money-back guarantee. Try it for 90 days. See that God doesn't bless you, and if he doesn't, call us, we'll give you your money back. And you know what? We've done that many times before. Many people have taken us up on it. Do you know how many people have called and asked for their money back? Zero. Because it works. When you give God the first of your week, guess what he does with the rest of your time? He blesses it. He multiplies it. God can take six days further than you can take seven. That's why he tells you to Sabbath, the rest, to give God the first. And when you do that, Jesus said, if you seek me first, if you prioritize my kingdom first, I'll take care of everything else. That is his promise, but it doesn't happen until you actually do and prioritize your life around those things. We give God the first of our year, our month, our week, and the first of our day. This is where we spend time daily with God. In this book, Atomic Habits, they talk about these things that you'll never change your life until you change something you do daily. It's a daily thing. And we give God the first part of our day. That's part of this year of, of helping you and equipping you. Man, there's so many resources, but this, th- these are devotionals that you can do within about 10 minutes or less that you can say, God, I'm gonna give you these 21 days. I'm giving you the first part of my day. Here it is, God. Before I do anything else, before I get the kids ready, before I get on my phone, before I start returning emails, before I do anything else, God, I'm giving you the first part of my day. Here it is, God. And when you do that, God blesses the rest of your day. You're putting him first. And I get it, it's tough, and and, and it's tough to create time, depending on the season of life of where you're at, but I believe everybody can do this. It's called the first 15. And here's what I would challenge you to do if you don't have a consistent rhythm and routine of this in your life right now, is to do this. Spend five minutes in the Word. The one-year Bible app. I do this every year on my phone. It's in my phone, it's in the YouVersion Bible app. If you don't have it, download the YouVersion Bible app. There's a ton of different plans you can do. I do the yearly Bible, I posted this week, it's the CCV version of that, and it's five days a week, and and then it gives you two days off that you can catch up or read ahead or whatever that is, make up if you didn't do that. And you can read through the whole Bible in a year by giving about 10 to 15 minutes a day to scripture. You can read through the whole Bible in one year. So I would say this, if you, if you don't do a plan, just start five minutes in the word. Read a por- portion of the New Testament, read a psalm. Read a proverb. Get in God's word. Spend five minutes in worship. Before you get on any other media, put a worship song on. And again, you don't have to stick to this specific routine. For me, I mean, I do that in the car. I put on worship and I, I, I worship on my way into the office, whatever that is, and maybe you do that. But, but give God a worship song. Pick your favorite song, come on, right? And you just sing it. You start your day. God, we re-surrender. You're calling, I'm coming, God, I want you. I'm serving you, right? I'm telling you something. It makes a difference. Mentally, it makes a difference. So then spend five minutes in prayer. This is just giving thanksgiving to God, praising God, thanking him, presenting your request to God as scripture tells us to do. And over these next few weeks, I'm gonna teach you different models of prayer that we find in scripture through the tabernacle prayer, the prayer of Jabez, and some other things that'll help give you models and, and ways that you can pray that I believe really allows God to move in powerful ways in your life. And as the band comes and we prepare to close out, we give God the first of our our year. We're doing that right now. And I would encourage everyone in the church, everybody who's watching right now, participate on some level. If it's just one meal, if you just say, hey, I'm gonna do uh, half a day a week. I don't know what it is, but, but pray and say, God, what do you want me to do? Maybe it's social media, maybe it's media in general, TV, Netflix, I don't know. 
but say, God, I'm gonna carve out some space for you. This year, I'm putting you first. And then, God, I'm gonna put you first every month. I'm gonna evaluate every month. I'm gonna look at my calendar. I'm gonna look at my budget. I'm gonna look at things and go, God, is my life prioritized around you or just me? Because listen, if my life is prioritized around me, God can't take second place. He's first or none. But when I put him first, man, he helps me take care of everything else. It's a keystone discipline in my life. Man, I'm gonna give God the first of my week. I'm gonna make church a priority. Being in God's house, I'm gonna make it happen. I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk to my, my kids' coaches and let them know, hey, we're gonna be a little late to this game because, man, we prioritize getting my kids in church. I'm gonna be picking my kids up early from practice on starting this year, and I'm gonna be getting them to, to hype on Wednesday night because it's important that my kids understand that God needs to be a priority in their life. He's not just a part of their life, he is their life. And then every day, I'm gonna give God the first of my day. I'm gonna wake up, I'm gonna thank God, I'm gonna seek God, I'm gonna pray to God, I'm gonna worship God, I'm gonna get in his word. And if we do those things, I believe, man, it can change our lives because here's what scripture promises you. Here's the last way to implement this principle is if you put God first in your year, your month, your week, and your day, then you can expect God to bless the rest of it. You can expect it. He promises it. Expect God to come through on his promises. Start living in faith. God, I'm putting you first. And when I put you first, God, you promised me. Jesus promised that he would take care of the rest, right? It's the principle of the first. Whatever you put in God's hands throughout scripture, he multiplies it. You want your day to go better, give him the first of your day. You go, I don't know if I have time. He multiplies your time. It's It's amazing. God will do what he says he will do. You give him the first of your time, your, your talents, your treasure, your finances. He multiplies. It's supernatural. I can't even explain to you sometimes how it's worked in my life. I go, I don't know how. I don't know how we, we, we have this money. I don't know where this extra came from. I, I, I don't know. But I know I'm putting God first. And when I put God first, you can expect him to bless the rest of it. You start walking in that kind of faith because here's the reality is it takes faith to put God first. You're saying, God, your priority, I trust you to take care of it more than me to take care of it. I trust you to to, to take care of my kingdom if I take care of yours. And he will do it because here's his promise in Proverbs 3. I'm paraphrasing a little bit, verses 6 through 10. Read it for yourself. It says, in all of your ways, acknowledge him. Honor the Lord with your wealth, here it is, with the first fruits of all of your crops. Then your barns will be filled to overflowing and your vats will brim over with new wine. Listen, think about all the different areas you can apply this principle to. Man, you put God first, you honor the Lord first in your career. All of a sudden, there's blessing in your career. Man, you honor the Lord in your marriage. You put him first in your marriage. And all of a sudden, man, your marriage is overflowing with joy and the presence of God and the spirit of God. This is the principle, and I promise you, this principle works if you'll work the principle. You can expect them to bless it. So we reorder our lives. Perspective is a powerful thing today. I'm hoping you're gaining some perspective on where you're at and and, and just stepping back and getting a new point of view on, man, where is my life? Where is God ranking right now on my calendar and in my budget and and with my time and, and in my family? How much time is my family spending together seeking God? I'm telling you, these 21 days of prayer and fasting, do it as a family. Bring your kids along with it. Say, kids, hey, you're fasting you're fasting Paw Patrol. Come on, right? No Disney this week. Get off the app. No Switch. No PlayStation. You're doing it with us. I'm going to teach you what it means to prioritize the kingdom of God. We're going to serve. We're going to go to the prayer nights. We're going to go to a Dream Center event. We're going to prioritize God. We're going to put God first in our lives, in our marriage, in our family. And when you do that, come on, you can expect them to bless you. You want your kids to follow God? Lead them, show them, teach them. This principle works if you'll work the principle. Hebrews chapter 12 gives us this picture that I want to close with and give you one last encouragement today to think about those who have gone on before us and the heroes of our faith. And it says, We got this crowd of witnesses to this life of faith. So, man, let us strip off every weight that slows us down. Every sin that easily trips us up. And, man, let's run. Let's run. 
Man, let's put God first. Let's run the race God has given us with endurance. And we do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus. He's first. He's first. He's the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. And for the joy awaiting before him, man, he endured the cross, scorning its shame. He did hard things because his priorities were right. Now he's seated in the place of honor at God's throne. Think about all the hostility he endured from sinful people. Then you will not become weary and give up. And God says this, man, if you put him first, if you seek him first, if you do that, you don't, don't grow weary, don't give up. Because in due time, in the right season, you will reap the blessing of harvest in your life. You will. It's the principle of sowing and reaping. You sow God first, you will reap the blessings of God in your life. And for this year, come on, as a church, let's go after him. He's cheering you on. Let's get our eyes on him and off of everything else that pulls us away. He's the prize, he's the champion. He endured it all, and if he can do it, he says you can do it, because his spirit is in you and available to you and living in you, and we're his people. He is our God. Come on. Today, let's re-surrender to the calling, to this principle, and I'm gonna put God first. This priority is a discipline, it's not just intention. It's not just getting pumped up and going out. You're gonna have to change some stuff. You're gonna have to do some things differently. You're gonna have to change some stuff in your life and your calendar and your budget and with your kids and their calendars and what you're doing. You gotta change it, but listen to me. If you will do it, if you will work this principle, it will work. God will respond to your faith to put him first with his faithfulness in only a way that he can. Amen? Would you stand with me today? Father, we do put you first. God, I'm kind of preaching to the choir this morning. Those online, those here in the room, God, they have obviously said, hey, this year we're starting things right. We're gonna put God first. We're showing up. Man, they're the 830 crowd, Lord. They're here. They believe this principle, and I pray today you'd give them faith to implement it, not just for an hour on Sunday, but God, every part of their year, every first part of their month, their week, their day, God, that they would realize the power of, of priorities, the power of prioritizing our lives around you, our King, your kingdom, and the difference it'll make in our lives. So today, as we close out, Holy Spirit, come. As we commit to surrender once again to who you are, to your purposes, to your word, God, I pray that you'd move in a powerful way. In Jesus' name, amen.